Well, hello, welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Today is April 6th. Uh, this is the EU US ed edition. Uh, and today we have myself, Mark Waite, and Bruno Verakton. Uh, thanks for joining, as always. Uh, today on the agenda, a couple blog posts that we've published recently. Uh, just a note on the Jenkins Awards, DevOps France, just to highlight that that's coming shortly. Uh, Google Summer of Code has uh, been making lots of progress. We want to highlight some of that. Uh, some of the improved process, CI process for Jenkins.io and what that means. Um, some discussion about how we can resolve the number of open pull requests, or at least track them and figure out what to do, uh, what we can do to help that. Uh, the Jenkins Weekly and uh, yesterday's LTS release uh, are using new PGP signing keys, as well as uh, some uh, the Windows MSI installer signing certificate. So uh, a few different updates there we'll talk about. This, the LTS was released successfully. Um, I just the other day submitted some additional guidelines for the contributing guide for Jenkins.io. Um, specifically, this was for images. Um, the uh, participation and engagement with Jenkins, just a, I thought it would be a good topic to talk about for a couple of minutes. Uh, and then provided we have time, uh, some early end of life for CentOS 7 talk. Uh, this has been something we've been discussing for a while. Uh, and then the end of life notifications in Jenkins Core. Again, that is something that we have been discussing over the last few weeks. And if we have some time to discuss that, we can uh, get there. Uh, is there anything else that should be put on the agenda or any questions or concerns before we get started? All right. Perfect. So uh, first things first, uh, we have two recently published blog posts. Uh, one is uh, from Mark about the new Linux repository signing keys. This is something that uh, we have been working on and just got updated. Uh, these are in effect as of weekly 2.397 and uh, LTS 2.387.2. So the most recent builds have these uh, in, in, uh, integrated in already. Yeah, with sincere apologies to those that we disrupted because we didn't detect this soon enough. It would have been much better if we'd given warning months previously that this was coming and we would have changed on a knife edge. We didn't. We missed it and we left people on the LTS broken for about a week. So unfortunate. Sorry, we'll fix it. We'll be better next time. Mm -hmm. And we have a whole three years to learn from that mistake. So plenty of time. Uh, and then the other blog post. Uh, oh, and a quick note on this. So this information is also linked in the change log. Uh, the upgrade guide is available as well. It contains the same information. So we do have this available in several different points. Um, and this has a little bit more information and background as far as what happened and what we did to change things. Uh, the next blog post that I wanted to highlight is one that we published at the end of March from Bruno. Uh, and this is actually starting a series of blog posts that are about Android and Jenkins and their relationship. Uh, Bruno has started by giving a really nice background about Jenkins and Android development and some of the intriguing and different ways that uh, he's got on using it, which is really cool and really interesting read. Um, definitely got me thinking about uh, alternative methods for using Jenkins. Uh, it's really cool, really out there. And um, yeah, there, and it's a series. Uh, there's one that we're working on now and there will be more to come. So uh, big thank you to Bruno uh, for the blog post series. Uh, anything else you wanted to share a note on that for now? Uh, no, uh, you did fantastic. I wouldn't have done as good as you presenting this article. So, yo, oh, thank you. I even want to read it. Uh, <laughs> That's good. Oh, and uh, fun note, this is an AI generated image that Bruno was able to come up with, had, uh, had AI come up with. So it's a fun little, that yeah. bug looks terrified. Uh, anyway. So uh, moving on to the rest of the agenda. So the Jenkins Award voting period has officially ended. It ended on March 28th. Uh, thanks to everyone who participated, voted and nominated this year. Um, we couldn't do it without any of you. And uh, the winners will be announced at CDCon, uh, which is May 8th through 9th in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada this year. So uh, if you're curious, be sure to uh, register and join us there. Uh, Additionally, DevOps France is coming up next week. Uh, we'll have Jenkins presence there. We'll have uh, Bruno, and I think at least one or two other people will be there with Bruno. Uh, we have Hervé Lemeur, Adrien Le Charpentier. Oh, beautiful. Hervé and Adrien will both be there with Bruno. So 
uh, we've got the dream team there. Amazing. Thank you very much, Bruno. Appreciate it. You're welcome. It's a gift to me being in DevOps, being able to talk with uh, Jenkins users and, and so on, and being with the best of them. You know, Adrian and Hervé will host uh, AM, AMR, but further ask me anything about Jenkins. And I hope that we will have interesting questions and we'll give stickers. Stickers are always fun. It's always a driving point, so good call. Uh, all right, uh, next up on the agenda, so quick update on Google Summer of Code. Uh, so at this point in time, the proposal submission deadline has passed. Uh, we got 55 valid proposals submitted this year, which is incredible comparatively to the last handful of years. Um, this is an outstanding number of proposals and more importantly, uh, showcases just how interested people are in joining the project and contributing. This is um, fantastic. Uh, big thanks to Jean-Marc Messen, who's been uh, the org admin lead for this project and uh, is helming this along with Bruno uh, and Alyssa Tong and Chris Stern. Um, without all of the work that they're doing, this would not be possible. Um, and right now we're gonna have, it looks like we'll have four projects for Google Summer of Code and uh, lots of work to do with those. We have a lead mentor for each project, which is fantastic. Um, everything is just shaping up to be, look really good this year. It's, uh, it's a little bit of a problem that we have too much uh, interest in the project. Uh, you know, it's a good problem to have, but uh, there's a lot of folks out there that want to contribute and be part of it. And uh, we're just doing what we can to make sure that that's, that's what happens. Uh, and more details to come on Google Summer of Code. There, uh, we are getting in, going to be getting into the uh, initial phase of community building and uh, interaction. So uh, as we approach May, we'll be getting more into that as well. Uh, the next one on the list is the improved CI process for Jenkins.io. Uh, so uh, Hervé Lemaire has merged change, which saves time and disk space in the CI jobs. Um, Ultimately, this means 36 gigabytes total of disk space freed up for ci.jenkins.io, which is massive. Uh, this also means that there is uh, 20 seconds saved for job execution uh, due to the not wasting disk space. So um, overall 4% of the total job time. Uh, now, uh, I didn't have as much insight personally. Mark, is there anything else you wanted to share about this topic? You know, just be aware that we're no longer wasting that time or that space. Thanks okay. to Hervé for detecting it. It's an awkward thing to realize we've been storing something and spending time storing something that didn't help anybody. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, in addition to that, we uh, have a talk. We were talking about uh, reducing the number of open pull requests. Obviously, pull, open pull requests, we want to have closed and merged. People are working hard and want to make sure they're contributing uh, and that their contribu contributions get noticed. Uh, so the idea is that we can op reduce the open number of pull requests, and this will also help with disk space usage on ci.jenkins.io. And ultimately, uh, just something that needs to happen. Uh, we were at roughly 30 or so last year. It's gotten increased. So um, we need to make sure that we're doing better about reviewing and closing out pull requests. but. Uh, it takes a village community process. So anyone is more than welcome to join in on that. Um, the idea of participating and contributing in Jenkins is not that you have to make code changes or any kind of grand uh, update to Jenkins or Jenkins.io. Uh, testing code, reviewing code, reviewing pull requests, even if it's not code, uh, these sort of things go a long way with not only participating and contributing, but also uh, making sure that people feel their work is appreciated uh, and that it's engaging with others. Uh, nobody wants to work on something uh, by themselves for their own benefit in this sort of open source community. Uh, this is the idea, like open source community is the idea. So we want to um, encourage people to just find what inspires them, what they find they want to work on what interests them uh, and work on that and take those small steps to get to the point where you can create code changes or uh, big sweeping, you know, UI UX changes or anything along those lines. So something that we'll be keeping an eye on. Uh, 
As we said before, the Jenkins weekly release starting with 2.397 and the LTS release starting yesterday with 2.387.2 are using the new PGP signing keys. Uh, there is a blog post and community comments for these. Uh, so great instructions from Mark, as we said earlier, a little background um, and further discussion from the community. Uh, this is great. Wow, this is, this is directly linked to the discourse uh, site that we have. So uh, all these are direct from users uh, based on their uh, findings and usage of this. So uh, lots of great info there and uh, great interaction from the community there. Um, I don't know that these two, I don't think these things are relevant in this case. So I'm just gonna get rid of those for the time being. Uh, LTS 2.387.2 released yesterday successfully. Uh, a user did point out that the change log and upgrade guide had the incorrect date. So we fixed that. Thank you to Mark for catching and uh, or fixing that. And uh, I forget who the user is, but thank you for noticing and uh, letting us know. Um, one of the other uh, signing updates that came uh, that came through is the Windows MSI installer. Uh, this was not uh, available prior to a few days ago, but thankfully uh, Linux Foundation was able to get everything resolved in terms of any sort of legal complications or any other concerns they have. We now have this, uh, it is, um, signed, it's ready to go, it's, in, it's installed. So this is, um, now available. What a cliffhanger! <laughs> Everybody mm -hmm. said no, not not today. Maybe tomorrow. Uh, yes, lawyers are involved. Whoa, <laughs> that was kind of scary. And then mm -hmm. yes, finally we got the answer. Everything works perfectly, and Windows users will be relieved. I guess. Wow, fantastic work. Yeah, and and I just thank you to everyone that was involved in getting this updated and fixed and changed over. Uh, I know it was a lot of work behind the scenes to get this all taken care of and in such a short time period. Um, so huge. And uh, yeah, and everything's signed. So there's no risk or concern for any sort of, um, you know, danger there or um, unsecureness there. Uh, so big, 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 big win for Windows users in particular. So Fantastic. Um, yeah, anything else on that, Bruno, or just? No, 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 I'm just, just okay. relieved too that uh, people will be able to get their daily fix, no, weekly fix of Jenkins update on, <laughs> when running on Windows. That's all. Definitely. Cool, all right. Um, something that we've been discussing and something that I have finally been able to get uh, some pull requests put in for and uh, making a lot good headway on is additional guidelines to the Jenkins.io contributing guide. Uh, so my main focus has been images, and then uh, after that documentation and book submissions. Uh, so I've actually submitted the image guidelines. So that pull request is here. Um, it's not anything groundbreaking. It is not anything that is unexpected. It is very straightforward. Um, stuff like there's a lot of document, uh, just documentation formatting updates I made as well. But um, for images, it's stuff like using consistent screen sizes, making sure that the area is focused, making sure that when you go to uh, add an image or add a screenshot that it's providing the right content and context for any surrounding information. Um, so just really simple, straightforward stuff that we can you know, implement or set as a guide to help make sure that uh, things are aligned completely going forward or that our accessibility rating can go up. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things that I've been more concerned with in this is making sure that alt text for images is um, used to its fullest extent. Uh, ASCII doc can actually handle full sentence structure for alt mm -hmm. text. So for screen readers, for the, anyone with accessibility needs, that stuff's kind of uh, really important. So that's something that I want to have uh, take effect. And I think that by setting it as a guideline, that's a really simple way to set it up and without being invasive. Yeah, that will prove handy for sure. When I first started to interact with the Jenkins community, I started by making a few screenshots, you know, because the UI was changing. And I made a lot of errors. 
because a uh, lot of guidelines were just implicit. People knew, mm -hmm. but it wasn't written anywhere. So I had a lot of back and forth. No, it's wrong. Why is it wrong? Oh, this way. You forgot that. And the compression and the add. And yeah, now that it's written, newcomers will have um, it easier, you know, to contribute to, to the Jenkins project documentation. Yeah, fine. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, I, I actually uh, I forgot to put the compression aspect of in that, Bruno, so I'll have to update mm -hmm. that. Thank you very much for the reminder on that. Um, You're welcome. Uh, yeah, uh, screenshots and images are an easy way to get involved and make suggest a change or contribute something. Um, we have there's a new contributor right now. I'm sorry, I forget the name, but uh, they've been working on the UI uh, updates that came along with 2.395, where Manage Jenkins uh, naming conventions are simplified and whatnot. So they've been just doing that, and that's a fantastic way to get involved and get some low hanging fruit. So. Yeah. Yep. And you um, know what? With GSOC coming, uh, there is a project about automating screenshot um, for mm -hmm. the documentation. And that could help if this project is still with us in a few months from now. That will help um, the contributor to have the right uh, behavior when taking screenshots because everything now is available. You know how you're supposed to take screenshots with that guy. Yeah, and um, I I made sure to include the responsive design mode feature that mm -hmm. most browsers have so that we can make sure, uh, A, that the screenshots are all using roughly the same size uh, range, but more importantly, so we can take a uh, high quality screenshot that is going to render properly on either a large desktop or a phone. Um, so. Yes, because I don't know why, because I have quite a large screen, but most of the images I saw on Jenkins.io were limited to 839 uh, pixels. But I don't know why. It's not a problem, but why? <laughs> so. Yeah, I've noticed that as well, um, going through some of the screenshots and pages, um, especially, like I said, with the newer contributors contrib yep. uh, adding screenshots and stuff. And it's it's odd that it's such a small size, but it still is displayed. But this, with this, we can have some form of consistency yeah. and that makes it so folks with a bigger screen won't be able to um, take an image that's unfortunately scaled uh, more towards their screen than other people's. Uh, I ran into that when I was first starting with Jenkins work. So it's something that I get, it's an implied or yeah. <laughs> uh, understood thing that you don't necessarily know until someone tells you. So uh, let's tell people all these things. Yeah. But, but yeah. Um, and again, that's, I wanted to get the image guidelines in first because I have seen people working on them. Um, the documentation is already laid out pretty well and uh, book submissions are a new thing. So this was most important for me now that we've gotten this in there. Once I have uh, seen some conversation and responses happen, uh, I'll be, are more inclined to merge it once that's accepted uh, and then add the other guidelines from there. Uh, I've also started a community discourse thread for this. So if anyone does want to have a, a further discussion about this or any other guidelines, uh, there is a place to do so. Uh, I don't think I've had any responses yet. So uh, it's a little lonely in there with me alone, but you know, I'm waiting. Um, okay. But yeah, so Plenty of places to talk about it. Uh, the pull request is open, so it can be reviewed, suggested, suggested, added, whatever that anyone feels like. So uh, yeah, just keep an eye out for more on that. Uh, and then the next thing on the list, again, ties back into uh, the idea of just testing, trying out, review, reviewing uh, pull requests that come through. Uh, we've had, I've, you know, I've heard from several developers that they, really appreciate the fact that they see someone else working on something that they're interested in and it inspires them to also then work on it. Um, it's a solidarity feeling. It's a matter of uh, knowing that your work's noticed and, and appreciated, which is really, really huge and crucial to anyone doing open source work. This is um, that kind of appreciation, gratitude, acknowledgement is something that we want to constantly have for everyone involved. Um, so if you're not feeling confident in your coding skills, like myself, there's ways to review and test documentation updates. There's ways to review, 
um, simple code changes that are not so involved that it can't be discerned or determined. Um, there are various parts of Jenkins that you can work on, plug specific plugins. We have the web components for the Jenkins header and footer now. Uh, we've got the blog, we've got the story site, we've got so many things that uh, can be influenced that it doesn't have to be uh, one specific contribution. Um, these are all amazing ways and really accessible ways to get involved with Jenkins. Um, as we see the Google Summer of Code participants ramping up, as we start seeing more people uh, becoming involved, you know, this is the kind of interaction we want to support. Um, it can feel very daunting to get started with Jenkins if you're not sure where you want to start or how you want to, you know, add. Uh, I've seen it several times in the Gitter channels of people saying, hey, I, I'm new with Jenkins. I want to get started. Where can I start? Um, and nine times out of 10, I feel that they're, they're one of their first things they say is it's just very overwhelming. There's so much, yeah. um, it's a big, 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 big project. Like no one's going to sit here and dispute that by any means. Um, but if we can give folks either a, uh, detailed way of how they can figure out what they want to do or point them in places where they can then, uh, figure out what they want to do. Yeah. That's just when I a huge... first yeah, came in uh, to the Jenkins community, I just had to look at the repos and found that there were more than 2.5k repos. So I was, uh, I was freaking out saying, where should I start? That's, well, that's quite something. And later on in the process, uh, I was kind of bothered because I had missed a few interesting PR that I should have reviewed or participated in because I hadn't put the notifications on. So I put the notifications on and then I was overwhelmed by the quantity of notification that was, I couldn't do anything with them, uh, just piling up. So I don't know what uh, is the right thing to do with um, the Jenkins uh, repos, but yeah, you have maybe to do some cherry picking every day or something, but for sure, if you're interested in participating in the Jenkins community, you will find something. There is something waiting for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I'm going to steal a line from your uh, forthcoming blog post. Jen there's, uh, Jenkins has some to, way to fill that need. Whatever it is, Jenkins has a way to fill that need for you. <laughs> uh, it might be a specific plugin that helps you do your job. It might be you feel inspired to make a new logo like the possibilities just run the full gamut of simple to complex hmm. i can't state enough that uh, as a newer contributor and participant of jenkins that it's very overwhelming if you're not really sure where to get started um, it can be very daunting and it can be kind of scary to be real um, finding that one thing that can help anchor you to the project or help uh, make sense of a part of the project even a piece of the project anything that uh, grips you is is more than good enough to work on or participate via yeah so it's also very rewarding uh, i remember at the beginning of my journey with jenkins i had a need with arm 32 bits docker images for jenkins so i made one and I made my first PR and it didn't work uh, because I didn't know the project enough for it to be an effective PR. But people guided me and this PR got abandoned. We don't have Docker uh, images for Jenkins ARM32 now, but it will come in a few months from now. Anyway, but we now have some ARM64 bits because I made another PR and then got upset. The community globally is pretty welcoming so if one subject does interest you uh, with jenkins you should find mentors people uh, willing to help you and and onboard you on the jenkins community that's something i really love with the jenkins community yeah i've had the same experience frankly I, my first prs definitely didn't work i was not sure if i was making things properly you know the whole nine yards and and um the community stepped up. I've felt more welcome and engaged with the community than 
anything else before. And it really does make a difference when you're trying to just start. Um, mm -hmm. Having that person to introduce you to Jenkins is amazing. Having people in that you've never met and might not ever meet thousands of miles away, work with you, help you uh, online asynchronously, regardless. I mean, that's a really neat experience and something that um, not everyone can say, frankly. So I think that just makes us a lot more of a special community in terms of the outreach and engagement that we offer for new and returning users. Yes, indeed. I won't... Uh... Uh, be naming names uh, of other open source communities, but I've got some other experience with other open source communities that did not go that well. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, that can happen with anything for sure. I, it's, I think we just got something special here with Jenkins and the community that we have. It's very open, very, very engaging, and um, everyone's working towards progress and positivity and uh, uh, like a real end goal of making Jenkins great. So yeah. nice. Uh, on that note, there's a couple, like I said, there was a couple other points here. Um, so just really quickly, uh, early end of life for CentOS 7 is something that Mark has been pushing for. Um, it's approaching anyway. It's no longer, the CentOS 7 is no longer being supported. It's been in maintenance mode since 2020. Um, and there are plenty of alternative options and recommended options that we have like Altma Linux, Rocky Linux, Oracle. Like there are several choices here. We're starting to incorporate those into the documentation. Um, but uh, this is something that we have been discussing and considering for a little bit. And uh, at this point, we just really just need to get a Jenkins enhancement proposal going for it. Uh, and then we can track everything, have those conversations there and work on that. So more to come uh, when we get that uh, JEP actually set up. Uh, and something else, the end of life notifications to Jenkins core. Uh, again, this is something that uh, we've been discussing. We wanna find a general solution for end of life date um, for any of the uh, products or platforms that we're using. Um, so uh, the CentOS 7, I think uh, Debian, older Debian versions, older, like just any older version of stuff that's coming uh, end of life. We have, there's sites like endoflife.date that have an API we can interact with. Um, but ultimately just, we wanna find a way to alert users, let users know that this end of life is coming. Uh, with enough time and uh, cadence to have give them the ability to update or find that other solution. Um, you know, we're not going to stop supporting things on the drop of a hat. This, these are things that need to be taken into consideration and worked through uh, very diligently. So um, nothing's going to just happen uh, in that sense, but we do want to give that courtesy to users of Jenkins. So uh, again, more to come on that when we have uh, better idea of what the output will look like. Uh, is there anything else that you want to talk about, Bruno, on the call? No, thank you, Kevin. Okay. And uh, yeah, and like I said, Mark jumped off earlier since we're doing the 2.387.2 uh, live stream uh, between him and Darren Pope. So uh, that's going to be available on YouTube and it's happening live right now. So uh, yeah, if you want to go check it out, by all means. Uh, However, that is the end for our session today. Thank you as always for joining. And the video for this will be available in 24 to 48 hours. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you, Kevin.